Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, for the last couple of days, we've done some videos on Dr. Lee McIntyre and how to talk to a science denier. Now, Dr. McIntyre has studied conspiracy theory for several decades now, and he attended the Flat Earth International Conference in 2018 to observe what he considers the ultimate in science denial, the Flat Earth Conspiracy. And he related his experiences at that conference and some rather enlightening encounters that he had had with some of the major players. Now, Dr. McIntyre came to the conclusion that the Flat Earth is indeed a danger. And he found four reasons for this. The first is that it is anti-education. It, it foments distrust in science and technology. It reinforces conspiratorial thinking in matters that actually do have very significant impact on our society, such as the anti-vax movement. And finally, it is a stated goal of many flat earthers to infiltrate education, and not just in the United States, but in the United Kingdom and elsewhere in the world. And finally, flat earthers and children is very concerning. We've got self-admitted flat earthers claiming to have gone on to the internet, pretending to be children to talk flat earth to other children. We've also seen them go to elementary schools and try and hand out flat earth literature. This actually resulted in law enforcement taking action against that flat earther. But that was just identifying the problem. Now we're going to go to the next stage, and that is to look at the techniques used by science denial conspiracy theorists to try and counter evidence of the world around them. So let's cue up the music and learn about the five tropes of science denial. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Dr. McIntyre explain these and then I'm going to go through them in more depth. So let me turn this over to Dr. McIntyre now. Uh, and this was called technique rebuttal. And this was based on the idea that all science denial is the same. Whether you're a flat earther or a climate denier or a COVID denier, any of them, they all reason in the same way. Obviously, there are different uh, content in their beliefs, but the strategy that they go through uh, is precisely the same. Uh, these five tropes are uh, were first codified by the Hufnagel brothers, some later work by the cognitive scientists um, John Cook and Stephen Lewandowski. And um, there's uh, quite a bit of excellent work available now to sort of show you how you can use this to push back. And Betch and Schmidt even give some scripts for how to do this. The five tropes are these. Science deniers always cherry pick evidence, believe in conspiracy theories, rely on fake experts and denigrate real experts, engage in illogical reasoning, and insist that science has to be perfect. That last one is really my favorite because if you think about it, uh, in some ways they're they don't understand science, but they think that they're scientists and what the the biggest mistake that they make here, I think, is that they tend to think that science is about proof, as if it were Euclidean geometry. Science is actually about warrant, warranted belief. When there's sufficient evidence, then you change their change your mind. For a science denier, that's not the case. They want proof. You know, when I started looking at the five common features of science denial and the flat earth, you know, the first thing that I would have put up was conspiracy theory because I believe that flat earth is just one of many conspiracy theories that people hold. That's how they fall into this rabbit hole. But I tend to agree with Dr. McIntyre's choice, and that is the cherry picking of scientific citations. Now, why is this? Because if you just sit down and say, well, the Bible told me this is what it was, I'm taking it all on faith. Okay, I can accept that. I don't necessarily have to share your faith with that but I at least see where you're going. It's not science. Science is data and evidence. So what they try and do is they don't want to be dismissed. They want to give the air of being scientific. 
much like the scientific creationists and the intelligent design people in the late 80s and 90s tried. Now, Quantum Eraser is a classic example of a cherry-picking flat earther. He is famous throughout YouTube for his ability to misrepresent scientific citations. So what Quantum Eraser will do is he will take a phrase like, gravity is not a force, and he will do a Google search for the phrase, gravity is not a force. And then he'll find a scientific sounding paper, and he will search within the text of that paper for his catchphrase, gravity is not a force. And then he'll loudly proclaim the sentence that says gravity is not a force. He won't read the rest of the sentence, he won't read the rest of the paragraph, and he certainly won't read the paper. Because had he done that, and as I have shown on a number of occasions, a couple of sentences or a paragraph or two later, the paper absolutely contradicts his position, and the entire paper itself contradicts his position. But he's counting on his groupies to not know this, not understand the basic scientific principles, and not do their own research and pull the paper and read it themselves. But that's on him because people like me do pull those papers, and we do read them. Now, another classic case of flat earth cherry picking is the we see too far photo. For example, this classic picture of the skyline of Chicago from Warren Dunes in Michigan, 60 miles away across Lake Michigan, is a classic example. Now, this is a very abnormal situation. It was taken from an elevation of 180 feet on a spring day where it was very, very calm, and we had very cold Lake Michigan water, and we had a layer of warm air immediately over it. Now, that set up what's called a temperature inversion, and as a result, refraction increased, and we got to see a little further over the horizon than we normally would. And as a result, this picture made the local news because it was that newsworthy. It was reportable. Now, science explains this picture, and it explains what we normally see, which is nothing like this. Now, what the flat earthers and science deniers would do is say, look, that picture should be impossible on a globe. Therefore, the Earth is not a globe. Therefore, the Earth is flat. They keep making leap of logic after leap of logic. Now, as I said, science does explain this picture. What the science deniers don't explain is why is nearly half of the Willis Tower missing in that picture, and why are all the buildings vertically stretched? This is simply looming and a mirage. There's nothing special about it. We can go out and get this picture under the right conditions anytime we want. All we need is a calm, warm day with cold water, and we'll go up 180 feet into Warren Dunes and take that same picture. Now, another advantage of cherry picking is that if you come up with a list of 100 globe-killing flat earth proofs, and we disprove every single one of them, they'll just go out and find another one or another two. It's like playing whack-a-mole with them. Now, next we have the conspiracy theory. Now, there are real conspiracies in the world, and there are conspiracy theories. Well, what's the difference between the two? Real conspiracies can be exposed with good investigative work and produce evidence of the conspiracy. Watergate in the United States was an excellent example. There was a conspiracy to bug the Democratic National Headquarters to assure the re-election of President Nixon. A group of people got together, figured out how to break into Democratic National Headquarters, and they were exposed. And with good investigative reporting by the Washington Post, the entire conspiracy fell like a row of dominoes. Contrast that with moon landing denial. Moon landing denial is a conspiracy theory, and it's a science-denying conspiracy theory. There is ample evidence that we went to the moon. Many of the people that went there are still alive. Many of the hundreds of thousands of people that put them there are also alive. In the 50 years since the moon landings, not one person that participated in that moon landing has come out and said, nah, really didn't happen. There were no deathbed confessions. There were no angry, best-selling autobiographies. Nothing. None of the NASA engineers came out and admitted that there was a hoax. Now, what's the physical evidence that we went to the moon? Well, we bounced lasers off the reflectors there. 
We can see the landing sites from cameras in lunar orbit, and those landing sites match the landing sites taken at the time of the landings, and so on and so on and so on. Now, the difference between a true conspiracy and a conspiracy theory is that a true conspiracy, as I said, has evidence can come to light to verify it. In a conspiracy theory, evidence comes to light that falsifies the conspiracy theory, yet people still promote it. They did it with the moon landing, they did it with vaccines and autism, and now they're doing it with the flat earth. Now these conspiracy theories are easy to debunk. I've debunked many, many, many claims of the flat earth and conspiracies about the moon landings, etc. But people that believe in these conspiracy theories don't watch the debunking videos. They don't want to hear any evidence that's contrary to their narrative, and if they do, well, they just deny that it's really evidence. Now, who benefits from these conspiracies? Well, the people that are within the conspiracy. Some people do it for economic gain. Some people do it for social value to the people within the group. You know, Quantum Eraser is probably somebody that really doesn't have much of a life outside of YouTube, but he's a big deal in the Flat Earth community here in YouTube. That's important for his ego. Now, there's also financial gain for these YouTube channels that promote the Flat Earth. Nathan Oakley's a good example of that. You know, I've often said that people in the science denial community, the Flat Earthers, the conspiracy theorists, they really break down into two groups. They have those that sell the t-shirts, and they have those that buy the t-shirts. Now, the people that sell the t-shirts do it for financial gain, they do it for ego. The people that buy the t-shirts do it to be part of a group. They have a social network. In the first episode, we talked about science denial not being about evidence, but being about image. These are the people that buy into the image, the rebels. These are the people that have special knowledge. You know, these nefarious powers have done everything they could to hide these things. But even though all of that effort went into hiding these conspiracies, these guys on the internet managed to figure it out because they're woke. They got special knowledge. Now, when they write the history of mankind in the future, these are the people that envision themselves as being the heroes. They're the whistleblowers, the people that blew this all wide open. In the future, when, when the truth comes out and the earth really is flat, aren't you going to feel foolish? Well, no, I'm not. I'm really not, because I don't think that's ever going to happen. Two other psychological factors that come into play. One is anxiety. One of the things Dr. McIntyre noted was that a lot of these people are what he called broken people. They had had financial, medical, or other emotional upheavals in their lives. And this was a safety net that they fell into. It gave them a sense of stability. The other one is narcissism. Uh, a lot of the leaders of the flat earth are very narcissistic individuals. And this just plays into their ego because they're viewed as the authority of the flat earth. Well, thank you very much for stopping by and visiting with me today as we go through science denial and how to approach it. Now, in our next episode, we're going to talk about the use of fake experts at the expense of real experts. So take a moment and hit that like, the subscribe, and the bell icon so you're notified when the next video comes out. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by, and I'll see you again next time.